What's going on guys? Talk Aston Villa here back to review the Man City 4 Aston Villa nil match. Yes, Aguero, Yaya Torre, and Sterling made us miserable once again. We had false hope till after halftime and we absolutely bottled it. Season over, that's how you want to summarize this. I mean, if you want to really put it into a real life scenario for modern people, it's like going on Tinder. It's like you're matched with a hot girl on Tinder. You think you're literally going to hang out with her, and then she unmatches you. I mean, well, it's probably not that. It's probably a, a terrible analogy, but let's keep it that way. I'll keep that in. But anyways, I went to Twitter, at Talk Villa. That's where you can find me, of course. And I, let me know if you want to see this thing where I read out comments again. I had in old videos, but I want to bring it back. Um, so, at Raul Chicos 74 sorry if I butchered that. There is no anger, just mirroring the apathy shown by the club and players. Uh, next, we have R1 Chuck saying, Another awful performance. Guard has to go. He has made zero impact on the team. Big emphasis on the zero on this one. Defending, and then selection's awful. And I have to agree. I mean, I've been a big preacher of Remy Guard in a positive manner. But at this point, I mean, he's not the right man for the job. And I'll say that now. I was wrong. I don't think once we go down, he's a championship manager. We need someone with experience, and he's not it. And it's not nothing against him. I think he's a fantastic manager. I think he's a good guy, but we clearly were not the fit. He didn't get the support, hence no success, or limited success, basically, to anything. Next one, at Jack Miller 81 saying, I feel absolutely nothing anymore. That's the biggest issue. That's been me for the last few weeks, or really a few months, a few seasons, whatever you want to say. Um, he also goes on to say, honestly, I'd see um, I'd see whether we could tempt Gary Rowett away. I doubt we're going to get him from Birmingham. I doubt that would even happen. Let's, let's not even discuss that. Uh, next, at Grilla15, we're shocking, an embarrassment. Players shouldn't be paid for such shocking performances. I mean, at some stage, the players have to take responsibility. And I know after a match, you'll come out in the media, after post-media, little scrums and stuff. It's like, oh, we're disappointed. But realistically, beyond that, are they really disappointed? They probably don't give two fucks. They get their paycheck and go home. That's how I see it, at least. Sports in modern-day society is all about this. I don't care what anybody says. It's all about money. You can really shove it if you think it's about anything else, because it's totally about financial well-being than anything. Next, we have at UTV1982 saying, I don't even have an emotion or any emotions when we concede or lose anymore. Hashtag, we want our Villa back. Um, at Neil Coopsy saying, how is Remy Gard still on the job? And then the last one we'll finish off with, at Rocky B6 saying, I think us fans need to take some blame. Also, we chose to back this crap every week. We turn around, or we turn up to support Randy Lerner and show it's okay. Um, I know most of you will disagree, but take a look at what the club have done for our loyalty and where has it got us. And I think that's the best one. And I uh, thank you guys for all getting involved. If you want to get involved in the future, by all means, do so. But that speaks to me in volumes. I mean, we have to take responsibility. Yes, we show up in mass support, support the club, not what it represents, as in Randy Lerner's, Tom Fox, any other entity within the board, and certainly on the pitch. But, I mean, we have to look at ourselves, too. What can we do? What further things can we do? And brilliant support. Forever stayed. I know Man City's Twitter account even applauded whoever stayed from the Ville perspective, not leaving earlier. Great support, especially with, I can literally hear on the TV, um, the Learner chant, relegation fights from European nights, whatever the hell freaking goes. I can't really remember exactly. But it was great that you can hear that on a television, that that picks it up. That was fantastic to see. But, I mean, looking at this game, it's just utter crap. I mean... To defend, I wouldn't even say we defended well in the first half. It was pure luck. There's a little bit of resiliency there from our defenders. But, I mean, five at the back, realistically, if we conceded three against Everton with five at the back, how many do you think we're going to concede against City? Because, honestly, when it was 3-0, I wanted us to lose 8-0. Because those players on the pitch deserve to be humiliated. I don't give a shit anymore. Humiliate yourselves all you want because you won't be here next year. Mika Richards probably won't be there. I mean, I could name a number of players that won't be there. Richardson can piss off. Like, there's just a number of them. And it just 
There's so many problems, piss poor performances, and it's hard to even analyze a game without just going what in what is wrong with the club on a mass scale. Because full credit to City, they were frustrated in the first half, and they came out and played against an absolute shit side in the second half and said, you know what, we're Manchester City, these guys are absolute chumps, they're getting relegated, let's show them what we can do. And I mean, Aguero, Torre, Sterling, Navas had some good touches, made some good passes. Their team deserved that win. We didn't deserve shit. I mean, our chances were limited, and I think... Offensively, if you want to summarize this whole season up, when Gabby Bonlahor actually decided to make an effort and run, and I think it was the last 10 minutes or so of the match, ran down the left side, cut in around the defender, tried to cross it around to Alan Hutton, and it was about 10 feet over his head. I think that summarizes our offensive output for this season. I mean, we have, what, nine games left. We are not staying up. I mean, it is the most impossible. Because no one gives a giant fuck. I mean, if you want to say people that give a fuck, maybe in Kieran Clark. But I mean, we need players that give a fuck. And I mean, when we go down, we need to gut this squad. We need to cut the wage bill, take what you can. And if Lerner's still at the hem and Helm and honestly doesn't see that and wants full value for these fucking players, then you're mentally retarded. I'm sorry to put that out there, but you're stupid. It's just, I've, I've had enough. And... Making these videos are therapeutic, and it's some of the reason why I didn't make some in the past two weeks. I'll be, I was away, but I could have made a few, but what more can I say? I mean, it's shit after shit after shit performance, and I mean, it's just like beating, a, I don't know, a dead animal or something. It's already dead if you're going hunting or something. I don't know. It's bad. I, I come up with bad analogies, but anyways, I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Like the video, share it around. Let me know where we go from here. I think that's a big question I want to know from you guys in the comments below. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. We should be well past that, but I'm too lazy to put videos up in the last three to four years sometimes. But anyways, let's get that out. Let's get to 1,000 subscribers. Massive support. I appreciate it so much for you guys, and I'll see you guys probably in a couple days. Peace out.